Thank you. First on our agenda is the public comment period. Is there anyone here or has anyone notified us that they'd like to make public comment? No. No, no one signed up. All right. Going once, going twice, last chance. And moving on to approval of minutes from the April 6th meeting. No. I, I make a motion to approve the minutes from the April. I make a motion to approve the minutes from the April 6th Excellent. facilities committee. Second. And all in favor, which I presume is us. I abstain. All right. And next we have a progress report on. Um, Ongoing projects from Cindy Doucette. Good evening. How's everyone tonight? Congratulations on a successful budget vote and board elections. <clears throat> um, so I know we're pressed for time, so I'll be brief. Uh, phase one, we are working on closing out the remaining contracts. We have uh, uh, three or four remaining to close out and we're uh, close in doing so. High school roof. Um, the curbs that uh, will be utilized in phase 3B1 have been delivered to Danby and signed for uh, by campus. Those are on hand now. The roofer does have some rework to do at a skylight in area C and um, their shop drawing of that work is under review with Tetra Tech. Uh, we are also in the process of closing out prime contracts. Um, and I believe we are imminently closing one out uh, this week. Middle school temperature control upgrades, commissioning of the cooling side did um, occur during the April break. There were a few items found that needed uh, some work addressed by the contractors to complete. So we've been working with those trade contractors to get those things addressed so that we can bring commissioning back and complete that. Uh, substantial completion inspections are pending for the mechanical and temperature control trades until balancing is complete, which is dependent upon these issues uh, being completed with commissioning. Uh, phase two, Enfield, we did start the new HVAC replacement work uh, this week um, and things seem to be going well. We've only been at it for two nights, so. <laughs> but so far, so good. Um, at LACS, um, the main entry um, green roof components, metal edging um, are still remain to be completed, uh, but that's what been weather dependent. So we're coming into a time frame where we should be able to get that done. And the carpet in the vestibule has been installed uh, as most of the other um, construction work in that space has been completed. So there was little risk of um, getting it too dirty. The counters and the cabinets in the reception area have been received and installed. We found out today the curved window at the reception desk uh, was installed uh, today as well. Work at the Black Box Theater entrance um, has been proceeding and masonry is about 85% complete there. We did have some doors that came prepared incorrectly from the supplier and we'll need rework done um, once school adjourns. Uh, but we have that already planned and we understand what the issue is. So they only need them a day or two to make them make the corrections and then we should have them back and installed fully. Any questions at LACS? Uh, DeWitt, the toilet rooms, um, we're going to be working tonight on some of the uh, remaining heating equipment that was uh, needed to be provided by change order. They have two of the four remaining units to go in tonight. The other two are still on order. Um, auditorium work continues with theatrical lighting rough in. Uh, the electrician has found during their installation that some of the components provided to them by their supplier are incorrect and they are working to correct those. Um, rigging components uh, on the stage are also delayed. Some are not scheduled to be received until August. But the good news is when they come, they're gonna be for both DeWitt and Boynton. So we won't have to wait for Boynton's. 
The light pole bases um, were installed over April break. No wiring was, was pulled, but just the base work and the conduits were installed, which gives us a little bit of jump on summer. Remaining work for summer 2023 at DeWitt is the main entrance will receive new entrance doors, as well as the creation of a secure greeter space and vestibule. Also, exterior canopies will be added to the building uh, for students waiting for pickup. Nice. Any questions on DeWitt? Okay. South Hill, steel erection is complete except for the canopy steel. Um, metal studs and drywall in the addition have proceeded. Tiles been completed in the toilet rooms. Um, Work is running behind, we are aware of that. Um, it's been based on many, many issues up there. The most recent was poor soils when they dug up uh, for the retaining wall that is gonna go along the parking lot. Um, and Completed. There have been sight lights up at the south parking lot, but they have not been energized until the north parking lot is completed. Any questions at South Hill? Cindy, okay. south I, I have a question. Um, that north parking lot, how, or anybody who goes by there frequently, is that always full during the day? Okay. Yes. It's not like it's an overflow lot or anything no, like that. That's the primary parking spot for the staff. Okay. Thank you. You know the other part. Oh, on the other street. On the, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, also, I, I forgot to mention this summer we'll be renovating where Perry's office and the nurse are currently on the east end of the building after they relocate to the new spaces. Um, that that area will be. Um, fully gutted and create a large group room with its own access in from uh, the outside. Uh, new windows will go into that entire space as well with new casework, new heating equipment and new flooring and so on. Hey, at the high school, um, the Airy G toilet rooms were turned over at the end of April break. And um, what we have left is permanent fire alarm devices, which we're awaiting. The enclosure plate along the window wall edge at the floor, there will, there's a gap there. It's always been there. We are just going to enclose it. Um, and VCT floor patch in the corridor, as well as the new block uh, that was put in for the door infills needs to be painted and frames need to be painted. Area H did have the abatement completed over April break and demolition. Work has proceeded in there starting tomorrow night. They're going to be um, putting in new metal studs to create the new partitions and work will be proceeding in there. Any questions at the high school? Okay. Bell Sherman Boiler. Uh, we received the valve from day controls that we needed to continue that installation. And um, the plumber has been up there since last week working on getting that boiler hooked up. Cindy, I apologize. Can we go back to the high school bathroom for a second? Sure. Um, our student reps regularly ask us about the bathrooms. Mm -hmm. and so, um, what does it mean? I, I hear what you're saying. It's been, sort of been turned over, but not, not using them. No, they've been using them yeah. since the end of April break when they came back to Sean, yes. Uh, we did have an issue with um, ventilation. There were 
complaints about stinkies. And we um, investigated that and did find that the uh, fan that was provided was incorrect and the vendor or the HVAC contractor has rectified that and reinstalled. So things should be functioning properly now. So Cindy, most of the restrooms, the faucet fixtures are new. Yes. Yeah, because over here at York, that's um seems like some of them are broken in the restrooms or are missing some pieces. In G, in or, this area here. Yeah. In K, we didn't touch them in K. Oh, okay. So that so Dan Ryman, kind of please make a note. Heather, make in a note. Here. There you go. <laughs> so Heather, that's yours now. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Um, that completes the work for phase two. Any questions in general? Okay. Phase 3A1, which is the Enfield roof replacement, as we reported previously, that contract has been awarded and we are now waiting submittals from the contractor to start flowing in, but work is not scheduled until summer of 24. So it's not critical that we get them right now <laughs> for work this year. Phase 3A2, which is BJ, BJM and Enfield renovations, as we reported previously, bids came in extremely over budget. And so we've... Um, worked with Tetra Tech and we're pulling the window installation replacements at BJM out as a separate contract. Um, we're gonna be sending that to um, the street for bidding on May 26th with the bid date of June 21st for a potential award at the June 27th board meeting. Um, and we're doing that because windows are about eight weeks, or I'm sorry, eight months uh, to get, yes, of lead time. So eight months. So if we waited and incorporated that work into the bid that we're gonna do in the fall for the STEM area and the high school uh, HVAC renovations, that would be eight months longer uh, that we would have to wait for the windows at BJM. So by doing this, it should feather in nicely that some of the work that we need as far as blinds on those windows and the masonry restoration, we should have a GC on board under the 3B1 package to do that work in conjunction with the windows timing should work out pretty good. <laughs> um, the remaining work that was part of that phase, which is the masonry restorations, as I just mentioned, the blinds at BJM, and the work up at Enfield with the uh, student drop-off canopy, the new canopy at the visitors, and the facade of the cafetorium, that'll all be incorporated under phase 3B1. And we have a tentative bid date of in the fall of this year pending SED review and approval. The documents were sent to SCD on March 31st, so we're just a waiting game right now for them to complete their review. They will tell you six months on their website, but um, <laughs> our experience on our projects lately have been seven and a half to eight months. <clears throat> and then the last phase that's currently under uh, design is phase 3B1, which is the second half of the HVAC equipment um, upgrades here at the high school, the playground at Fall Creek, cafeteria work at Fall Creek and BJM uh, is currently in design uh, phase and um, we'll be working to complete that and submit. That's 3B2. 3B2, yes. Um, complete that. Um, So it's, it, it, and it's going to start about a year or two after um, the phase 3B1 pending SED approval. Any Jill, questions? Oh, I'm sorry, Cindy. I was going to also just, um, if you do, please um, ask questions. And then I just wanted Chris to give a couple of updates about um, not the capital project work, but uh, the capital outlay, the Northeast, and then since Proposition 2 was approved last night. So my apologies for interrupting. Yep. Thanks. Yeah. So there are a few projects that kind of exist somewhat outside of the bond referendum capital project. So multiple stage piece of work that Cindy's been talking about. Uh, one of those are um, the capital outlay projects, which are these $100,000 projects, which happen on an annual basis and you get the aid back very quickly. Uh, the current one is at South Hill. Mm -hmm. that will happen this summer, which will Resand and restripe the floor, the gymnasium floor. That's the lower gymnasium floor, not the cafetorium one that's upstairs. Um, as well, remove that hard partition, 
and going with a walk draw curtain as we've been doing it, Boynton, the Wit, Caroline so far. So that's coming up. Um, and that that work is scheduled to begin when school gets out. Uh, the Northeast Elementary School courtyard uh, work is to remove that leaning retaining wall and provide a stepped area in there uh, for students, uh, for the, the younger students that use that as a play area. Uh, so that also is teed up for this summer construction. Um, and then, yeah, congratulations uh, on you know, Proposition 2. That funds the second of there are three phases, as we've conceived it, um, of your electric bus infrastructure improvements uh, to stay ahead of the actual delivery, you know, purchase and delivery of the actual buses so that uh, the charging opportunities uh, stay ahead of the actual buses. Thank you. Thanks. Any questions from committee members or anyone else? But I have a question. Um, do we have some sort of spreadsheet that shows like the project description phase and expected completion time? And if we're off completion, some description that I could In the monthly report, there is a schedule okay. section. Um, it's not a spreadsheet, it's a software that we use, but yes, it gives you um, that information there. And that's in our board docs. We didn't send it to me. But she's supposed to get it out today. So, yeah. okay. You should have it shortly. Okay. But there are others in there from previous reports. Okay. Thank you. And with that, I mean, I know we in other projects created sort of a radical like, timeline. Definitely. Like, maybe that can be helpful. Oh, yeah. Did, I remember seeing that. Right. Maybe it's, and it may already be there, right? Maybe. Right. No, I think I think that's a great request to, I mean, obviously you all know that we work with the communications department specifically on the capital project. Um, and that area of the website is really visually pleasing. And so to create a graphic, uh, Karen, to your point, right, of just sort of like what's been happening and where we are, um, I think that Casey could probably pull that together very easily for us because Casey does get copies of that report and uploads it to the website, but to make a more like user-friendly infographic of that, um, I think that could be an easy thing to do. Yeah. Um, should I presume that we will have, let me ask you, <laughs> what are we thinking about the possibility of having one or more of the buses running loose since that end of year? Exceptionally high. Yeah. We have five with proposition two, we include five on the schools. We uh, thanks to Chris on the proposition and building structure. So we feel we feel we can be able to bring on five buses into that. Plus, we also have some new value in scheduling software that we're making this. All right. Thank you, Cindy. Thank you, Chris. Thank you. Thanks. Next, we have a facilities update from Heather Williams. I don't know if that's wrong. Well, I could do the same thing. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Oh, here's guess what? Everything's not being posted tonight. I'm down. Um, so I can start off. I feel like uh, there's a, a back and picture question that came up in the other, and if you wouldn't mind repeating that question for me, then I will try to answer that if, if that's all right. There are some of the faucet fixtures that are broken in this restroom over here. Thank you. Um, it wasn't on my radar. And I think the best thing for me to do is to walk over and give it a look and work order it and get those things fixed. So uh, I appreciate that. That um, usually those, those things are quick. They're usually like half an hour. So that should be set by Friday. I think, I think we should be good. Thanks. Um, as far as, uh, uh, were there any follow-up questions? Sorry, I don't need to. 
Um, as far as the, the usual uh, story hour, I, I crammed in a few extra pictures today. Um, and uh, I think a, a, there's not a, any particular place to start. So I, I'll go to the top right and the, the blue circle with the um, yellow X. And what we have are, are Travis's. We have Travis Gordon here on the left and Travis Rumsey on the right. And they are constructing some very sturdy and reinforced benches for the Cuga Heights community and for the BJM community. And um, they had a, a kind of a draft of a bench, I guess you could say. And they found out that, um, that it didn't, it wasn't as sturdy as they thought. So they, they, re, they redrew it, tested it by jumping up and down on it um, and doing all sorts of, you know, kind of toughness tests. And then they worked together to, to build quite a few of those. And then they delivered those and set those up. Those benches, uh, Cuga Heights already um, had one and now they just have more than one. For BJM, they're gonna be out back. Um, I, I met with Big Mike and he pointed to a few places where he thought uh, around the basketball court, that'd be a good idea. We're also gonna be building um, uh, or moving uh, benches with flower boxes to that area. So uh, it's in an effort to increase the, um, the seating capacity back there, but also um, a recent project has changed some of their garden spacing and access right now. So we wanted to make sure that especially through the summer, that that space is as living and breathing as it should be um, for those kids. So that's the, the start of that. Um, below that, there's a, it's a screenshot of an email I got and that is from the science department. And um, as a result of some of the moving and shaking, um, I met several times with several of the teachers and we measured, um, we measured their microscopes, we measured their equipment, we measured their seating, we measured their rooms, and then we ordered um, furniture that is a, a perfect instructional match. So instead of um, uh, making do, we asked, what do you really need to do your work? What, are the, what do the kids need? What do you need? And the um, department sent an email and it, um, there were a couple pictures in it, but um, the email just said, I wanna thank all of you for making this happen. The room is better than ever as a learning space. And that for me is at the heart of what we do. And it could be, uh, you know, it could be furniture, it could be temperature, it could be air quality. Um, but really what we're trying to do is make sure that uh, facilities grows in its understanding of supporting teaching and learning. Um, not pictured, but I'm just gonna go with the story. We have another uh, maintainer, his name is Larry Carr, and he has been growing in his capacity to understand how his work impacts teaching and learning. And specifically, he's an HVAC specialist, so he does a lot with, with temperature and um, an advocate um, from, I think, Boynton reached out and said, we have a, we have a student in need, um, here's, here's the IEP, what can you do to work with us? And Larry went there, met the kid, asked for help understanding the IEP, came up with a, a plan to change the, the temperature and comfort, installed the unit, and then came back the next day to just hang out with the kid and to ask him, how are you? How's, how's that feel? And for me, that's a huge change from 10 months ago in terms of really making that connection between the work that we have to do every single day to make it so that students can learn and teachers can teach. Uh, so that's not pictured. The center picture, it's a little easier to see up top. Um, that is the, the temporary fencing that is um, in support of the, the board initiative um, to help GIAC expand its gym. So it's pictured there because even though it just looks like a fence, what you might not see um, is that it's really tightly and carefully zip tied together because Brian from Edger and Brooks from the city and Travis from uh, GIAC, we all really talked through um, that this is a kid's space. We have to make it sure, you know, make sure it's not a place where fences might fall or kids might stick their fingers or their hands through. So they were so, so careful in setting up this perimeter and so deliberate to avoid 
um, interruption of play in terms of like really working around um, the swing set, which might sound little, but when you see just a whole bunch of grownups from multiple organizations really putting their heads together on how not to interrupt play to do a construction project, that was very exciting news. The smaller picture. Can you stand up and go to the I'm happy to. Mm -hmm. So having the pleasure of picking up the young GI every day, mm -hmm. I've seen the fence and um, I'm, uh, it, it's impressive the way it looks. I can tell it can be a bigger area of space and it doesn't seem as much as what I think the drawing in there, especially when you see the person. But I know there were conversations and questions about whether or not the fence should be covered or should there be sight lines to see the equipment with that enticing young ones like to want to go climb on a tractor or um, has to be followed up on any of those conversations with either the BJM community or the GR or both to see if there are thoughts about. So I know some of our other construction areas do have covered fences. So the answer is yeah. But what really stood out, and I know there's an email about this, but I want to follow up here, is that the girls' softball field is embarrassing compared to the boys' field. The makeshift fence, the backstop is problematic. Um, and being a former softball player, I asked, like, what's up with that? And they said, it's frustrating for us, too, if a pitcher pitches and it hits the catcher's shin guard and goes, it will get stuck or go under the backstop. And it's a dead ball and the team takes the base. So because of a bad backstop, it's affecting their play. Um, but also just, you know, equity, right? Like girls field looks really awful compared to the boys. So I'm wondering if we're exploring getting a better backstop, uh, getting a proper fence, maybe one day getting a scoreboard that's as nice as the boys scoreboard. Mm -hmm. um, and so how do we make the girls team get what they deserve and feel good about their field? I appreciate that question and the conversation and the advocacy. Um, it also warms my heart. I coached uh, varsity softball for a couple of decades and, uh, and I officiate. Um, so in looking at that, I can say that some of those questions um, tomorrow morning when I meet with uh, Samantha, I think that those are the topics of conversations because that's a teamwork thing and I don't have a lot of the history. So what I can say is you're not wrong about your observations um, and we are going to make a, a timeline for making the improvements necessary. I say that also um, because it doesn't mean that everything on the list is going to be happening. So for instance, there's a, a portable fence and a lot of softball teams use portable fences. The baseball team, or it's my understanding of the history um, that that baseball field has been there for a while and it was finished and it is complete. 
And it is my understanding that at one point the um, softball program played offsite, and then a newer field was built right there. Is that accurate? Um, it, so <laughs> the my understanding is that the field, um, the outfield of the softball field is multiple purposes. So it's not fenced all the way around with a permanent fence because when it's not being used for softball um, from center field over to right field and beyond has other purposes serving sort of the district. So I can't make any real steps until I have a full understanding of, of the whole picture. The portable fence is movable because different levels of softball have different field lengths. Um, the backstop, it does appear to me uh, to need some attention. I can, I can speak to that. Thank you. Um, in, in the budget that was approved last night um, in the athletics code, which is the 2855, uh, you'll see that it includes softball and baseball backstops. Both fences are in need of repair and that was budgeted in Samantha's budget. Yeah. Ooh, thank you. Um, I can cross that out. Just a, tomorrow's just list. more context. Um, the equity issue is is beyond real. In the um, the baseball field took about uh, five years of advocacy and conversation about why we have fields on a swamp land or build a school in a swamp land, um, and then also significant conversation about the scoreboard as well. That was an, that was not an easy conversation for us, and it took a couple of years. We should have been doing the same conversation at the same time. There's no question about it, but it, it, it is going to be probably a multi-year approach on that. If, if, if we follow how long it took us for the baseball field, I think it's three years. From That's right. So the baseball field is part of the capital project, right? And it had massive drainage issues. That scoreboard is a, was 100%, except for the infrastructure, like running the, the wiring for it. Um, that scoreboard was 100% boosters. Um, there was a, a group that was a baseball boosters um, and did all of the fundraising for it um, brought it to the district, right? And where we talked about was, we spent a lot of time like to name it or not to name it, right? Those sorts of pieces. Um, you know, the softball field itself, I know that the dugouts themselves were just replaced. That was Danielle LaRoche. So that was, uh, what, about six years ago, seven years ago, I think, Sean? Um, those were brand new, <laughs> six or seven. So the, so they are newer in that facility, right? But I think your infield comments, um, the TLC of that of that space, it doesn't have the drainage issues like the baseball field does, but the infield work can definitely be done actually in a facility situation. So I think a number of the items that you listed, we're gonna get to either through the budget, right? Or um, just the attention from, from our department. And then if more needs to be done, right? As we think about that whole area or even the use, remember Marcos Flats was also built with a softball field. Um, and I think at that time, and please correct me if I'm wrong, there was some visioning about perhaps a softball space there at Markle's um, because of the multi-use facility outside of Boynton for PE classes um, of the softball field currently. So that is something that we could also revisit and discuss um, that, that we have that opportunity and, in that location. Think, All right. Would you like me to follow up with you after Samantha and I meet tomorrow uh, and revisit this, or do you want me to just touch on it next time I'm here? I mean, an email, an email would be great if that's possible. Sure. Everything's possible. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Um, any other follow up on that? Just if you could send it to all, I think. Sure. I probably all have an yep. interest in what's taking place. Yep, I can do that. Um, there's one picture that went away, I think, because I'm long winded. I apologize. Um, it is a picture of us hosting the New York State um, Facilities Association meeting. We hosted that at Hancock. Um, that means everybody from the upper part of New York State. Uh, uh -huh. We went today. Uh, it, it meets once a month and schools take a turn. So this morning I drove to our court and we, we had a meeting there. The April meeting was hosted by Ithaca in Ithaca. That is significant because... Um, Ithaca hasn't participated in New York State School Facility Association in, in any, it's over 30 years. There are people that have been there 30 years and they've never seen anyone from Ithaca. Mm -hmm. So um, I mentioned that only because we're being intentional with our staff. Sean Moore comes with, 
we're really trying to build our capacity and build our networking so that we can uh, get better faster. And, and plus it was great to have Hancock Street return to a professional development space. All right, thank you, Heather. I just have to say, Heather, thank you very much for sharing the story about Larry and his interaction with the students. I, I, I know I really appreciate hearing that because at times um, we, the community, sometimes think that just the educator mm -hmm. is the point person with the student and every staff member is connected and involved with the student's everyday life. So thank you for sharing that. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right. Next item on the agenda, we have nine minutes for a GIAC gymnasium and playground update. All the time we need. <laughs> thank you, Lily, for joining us. I think, Heather, thank you so much for giving the overview about um, sort of the collaboration with uh, their GC, general contractor, right, Edger, who was our GC for phase one. Um, different players, but the company is familiar with our spaces and really understands um, you know, what our priorities are. Number one is safety, right? Kids um, play. I mean, they really totally worked with us, which was fantastic. So uh, that was a very successful meeting. So we really don't have to say much more about that collaboration around the physical space. Um, Lily, though, thank you, has been also another collaborator in all of this and running more of point on um, really thinking about ways that we can safely utilize again, Markle's Flats, right? To be able to think about expanding that play space. And then finally, Heather, I might have you come back about just the playground itself and what we're doing um, in terms of um, the analysis that the that a parent shared with us around that play space on our side of the fence, right? Um, so that would be great. Hi, everyone. Good evening. Good to see everyone today. Uh, for those who are watching at home or watching this later, I'm Lily Talkett. I'm the deputy superintendent with Ithaca City School District. And, oh gosh, a couple of months ago, I believe, um, we, Jackie and I held a number of sessions with caregivers and staff to both gather more information about the play spaces that are accessible to our Beverly J. Martin students and families and also share some of the plans both short term and and long term and people were fabulous you know came out in the mornings afternoons uh we after you know offered a couple of different options here and some of the big takeaways as as we were listening was that it would be great to have some more picnic tables um people uh, especially educators it was great talked about designing a, designing systems that all staff would utilize in order to cross the street um, and where, right? So uh, handheld stop sign, cones, they already have walkie-talkies. So, you know, making sure that those <clears throat> were in range. Heather was great about a porta potty, a fully accessible porta potty, right? That that would would ensure that folks who are in wheelchairs would have access to that um, as, because we know that's a staffing issue, right? You're already over there and you've got your whole class. Everybody's ready to go doing some really cool stuff and someone's got to use the restroom, right? And you're the only person with all of your kids. So um, making sure that there's, that it's accessible um, was, was important. Um, and, and then um, the playground itself, very exciting. I'll, I'll let Heather talk a little bit about the playground itself. Um, but those were, so, those were some of the main conversations about accessing Markles and, and how, um, what we wanted to do in, in the immediate to make sure that we had access to, to that space. Um, Jackie and Larissa and, some of our awesome teachers, including Jenna Hallis, have been then now moving forward working on the garden spaces that are actually, they're in between the playground and Markle's right now too. So they're in the midst of planning in this interim, you saw what the fence looks like now. And there's still, there's still possibilities around gardening and how, how to 
continue those in this sort of strange state in the meantime, because it is a part of teaching and learning at, at BJM. It is part of, um, especially I would say the second grade uh, work that, that happens for young people. So they're in the middle of uh, figuring that out right now. Uh, but, you know, in general, it, it's been, you know, we've got a really nice team, fabulous team there. People are um, really collaborative and trying to figure out what the best solutions are. Um, Heather, do you want to talk a little bit about the joy of the slide and some of the other things that you all have been doing? One of the things that I loved was we had one of the meetings and at the end of one of the meetings when some of the caregivers and educators were leaving, um, Sean and a couple of other people from facilities actually were there to fix some things on the playground and people watched them outside and they were like, yay, it is working. Yay. Thank you for listening. So it was very nice. Thank you, Heather. Um, the joy of the slide. I feel like that's such an overstatement, um, but we're going to go with it. So Lil referred to the uh, aforementioned fixes that happened immediately. And to be honest, most of the fixes involve removing things that are broken. So that's a loss. And one of the things that was super duper broken is the slide. And we had a lot of trouble. We looked everywhere and we finally found one and we ordered it. And I'm excited about that. We don't have it. Um, so the joy of the slide is mostly in my mind right now. Um, but it does feel good to know that it's coming. I think that um, it felt great on our end to open up a conversation and to, um, to be able to listen and help problem solve. And even if we can't solve the problems as quickly as we'd like, I think that we were able to understand uh, what really needs to happen um, for, for the community and for kids to play. So that's the joy of the slide. All set. Thank you. Any questions? Jill, I, sorry, I, is this on? It is. Mm -hmm. it, does, sorry, I don't want to make sure it's accessible. Um, what, what was the decision for how we're handling traffic? Have we figured that out it's, yet? It's, um, I thought it was going to be a, fairly easy fix, but as I think Sean has found before me, um, <laughs> there's there's little agreement even on the board regarding um, how we go about or if we go about additional traffic uh, management there along between BJM and GX. So future discussions, I think. But you said little agreement among the board? Yes. Yep. I, I, on at least one occasion, I made a tentative proposal that we approach the city to um, do a traffic study and provide recommendations that would look at a pedestrian activated um, stoplight there or other options for making the crossing between BJM and, uh, and Markle's Flats easier. And my recollection is that that was not enthusiastically received at that time. So. Right, because you have to um, historically look at what has been made, what requests has been made in the past to the city and by whom. So that's what would need to be investigated because I know that either GEAC, BJM, other um, community members, residents, homeowners there, there's been some requests. Well, that would be part of a traffic study, actually. That would be the traffic engineer's job to look at what has been asked for in the past. Just, I, yeah, I think we'll let traffic engineers do what traffic engineers do and um, stay out of their way, and then we can agree or disagree. But do traffic engineers have an understanding of impulse control of children to the extent that we hope that they would? That's the job of a, a retired school psychologist. And, uh, <laughs> but, and current sitting. I, I think we should try to revisit the conversation. Um, I think one of the things we have to remind ourselves is that there have been significant attempts to monitor traffic on that street. And so some of the hesitancies, hesitancy from the city would be, look, we've been doing these things. We can ask for the last traffic study. Um, but I know that my last conversation with folks at GAC is they would like to join us in that dialogue 
because they're also crossing over for the basketball courts or for the pool or, you know, you, you name it. So um, it's probably time to revisit, um, but I don't it, think it's, I don't think it's not going to be a quick fix and it's not going to be universally agreed it, upon. It never hurts to ask and to involve the city as a, as a partner. Um, I, I will, I'll be frank with you. And that's my previous experience will, will, lead me to believe that the city's response will be that that's a relatively untraveled or low traveled um, piece of roadway and that it doesn't really warrant it even with the school and the playground doesn't really warrant additional um, what do they call them signals or um, management and that that they have a state uh, the state transportation department has rules and recommendations that they like to follow but that doesn't mean we can't engage in the dialogue so if you'd like to do that we can put that on the agenda in the near future i think that if it's not that used that's a good argument for just shutting it down during school and GIAC hours 